Hello data folks. Thanks for joining me again on this channel dedicated to data and IT professionals. We already have several DBT project use cases and examples in our playlist. Most of them built using SQL-based models. But here's the big question. Is SQL alone really enough to handle all the different requirements and transformations you encounter in real-world projects? What if your transformation logic requires a for loop or other control flow statements? And what if you need to parse complex text data or deeply nested JSON structures? Not just that, maybe you want to import and use a popular Python library to process or enrich your data. Or perhaps you need to prepare data for machine learning and AI-driven use cases using pre-built ML libraries, such as Scikit-Learn. These are the kinds of challenges where SQL-based models reach their limit, and Python-based DBT models come to the rescue. Python models allow you to leverage all the framework and best practices of DBT, while giving you the flexibility and power of Python, so you can handle advanced transformations and do things that are not possible with SQL right within your DBT project. So, in the rest of this video, I'll demonstrate some practical examples where Python-based models make a real difference. First things first, if you're interested in practicing along with me, please check out the links in the description where I've provided the scripts to create test data and all the code I use in this demo. Let's say you're working for a logistics company and for a particular requirement, you're dealing with two source tables. The first one is travelers, which contains customer details. And the second is a trip bookings table that records the bookings those customers have made. For this first demo, I'll be using the trip bookings table. To keep things simple, I've included just three travelers in their bookings. Now, the transformation logic is, we wanna apply a 10% discount on each booking, but with one condition. For each traveler, the total discount they receive should not exceed $100. Here's the output we're aiming for. If you look at Emma Johnson's bookings, she gets a 10% discount on her first three bookings. But on the fourth one, no discount is applied. That's because she's already reached her $100 discount cap. Similarly, for Liam Smith, on her third booking, only a $20 discount is applied since she had already received $80 across her first two bookings. Then on her fourth booking, the discount drops to $0 as she's fully used up the allowed limit. This kind of logic is a bit tricky and writing it in traditional SQL would either be overly complex or result in a fragile and hard to maintain model. So, SQL is not really a wise choice for something like this. But with just a simple for loop in a Python-based DBT model, we can handle this logic in a much cleaner and more efficient way. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at our first Python model. Please note, Python models in DBT are created with a .py extension instead of .sql. This model first loads the trip bookings data into a data frame. Take a look at how we reference existing models directly inside the Python code. The model that you reference can be either a Python or SQL model. You can also reference source tables or seed files here if needed. After loading the data, we sort the bookings by traveler and booking ID to process them sequentially. From there, the model applies the discount logic using a for loop. It keeps track of total discounts per traveler calculates a 10% discount on each booking, but ensures no traveler exceeds $100 total discount cap, applies the discount, and calculates the final booking amount. In case of SQL models, the result of a select statement is typically materialized as a table or view in your warehouse, and that table or view takes the same name as the model file. The same logic applies to Python models as well. The data frame returned from your model function will be materialized as a table or view, depending on the configuration you define in the model or YAML files. Let's try building this model. The build completed successfully, and I can copy the fully qualified table name directly from the logs. Now, Let's validate the results in the Snowflake warehouse. Perfect, the discounts and final amounts look exactly as per the logic we discussed earlier. Let's take another example. 
Imagine you're working on a machine learning project, and your task is to build a feature table from a raw traveler's table. Now, what exactly a feature table is, or what feature engineering means, that's outside the scope of this video. But I've added a link in the description that explains the basics of machine learning and feature engineering, in case you want to learn more. At a high level, ML models perform best when the input data is numeric and clean. So, during feature engineering, we typically cleanse any messy data and convert non-numeric data into numerical form. Here's a sample traveler's table in its raw form, not quite ready for ML yet. We need to do a few things. Cleanse the date of birth values, which is stored in inconsistent formats, and convert them to age. Encode categorical fields like gender and city into numbers. In simple terms, encoding means representing categories using numbers. For example, in the gender column, the encoded value zero represents female, one represents male, and two represents others. Let's see all this in action in a DBT Python model. At the beginning, I import all the external libraries needed for this task. I use the parser from dateutil to handle and clean dates in various formats. Then, I use Python's daytime module to calculate the age from the date of birth. For encoding categorical fields like gender and city into numeric values, I use label encoder from the popular machine learning library Scikit-learn. Let's quickly build this model and validate the results in Snowflake. Perfect, all fields except the ID are now numeric making this table ready for subsequent ML processing. And that's the real power of Python-based DBT models. You can bring in pre-built external libraries and unlock transformation possibilities that go far beyond what plain SQL can offer. That's all for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Thanks for watching.